Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy, praise the Lord. Well, friends, today is December the 25th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, today being December 25th, it would be remiss for me not to address this day that is being celebrated by millions across the world. And let me just say this, if celebrated properly, if our minds are upon the first coming of the promised one, who will redeem all mankind, all those who would surrender to the sacrifice that was made on our behalf some 2,000 years ago. If we understand that God Almighty entered human flesh and walked among us, and we celebrate that event in the same way that the angels celebrated when they heralded his coming, then friends, Merry Christmas to you. But if your day is only about social events, unwrapping of gifts, a day of rest from labor to enjoy football games, then friends, you have missed what this celebration is truly all about. So I pray that you will spend this day contemplating what it means when the Bible tells us that light entered into a dark world, when truth entered when only confusion had prevailed. And where the Almighty, who was once concealed behind a veil, now makes himself available to all that would bow and surrender before him. May you today, friends, sit in quiet contemplation, struggling to grasp what that truly means for each of us. Well, we're continuing in our study in the book of Romans, and today we are in probably the most significant chapter in all of the Bible. And so let me say right up front that I'm probably going to fail miserably in presenting all the truth contained within these verses. But I will attempt to explain them in a practical manner so that you can live more faithfully before the Lord Jesus, whom you've chosen to follow and to serve. So let's begin in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Now it says, There is therefore... No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, what does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? Well, it means to be living our lives exactly as we would if he were sitting, standing before us. If he was present with us throughout our entire day, how many choices would we make that would be different? Would we watch the same things? Would we listen to the same things? Would we say the same things? Would we read the same things? Or would we even think the same things? Well, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus because in Jesus, there is no sin. And so when we are in Christ Jesus, sin, which is presented to us by the things that this world offers, simply means that the world is behind us. The cross is before us. All of our attention all of our attitudes, all of our mannerisms, all of our practices, all of our thoughts are centered in Christ Jesus. And obviously, if we are centered in Christ Jesus, then there is no condemnation. But there is certainly condemnation when we walk according to this world, when we're outside of Christ Jesus, because we are not walking after the flesh, but we are walking after the Spirit. But if we are walking according to the flesh and not after the Spirit, then the only conclusion would be that there is condemnation. There is guilt. There is shame. There is convicting power of the Holy Spirit. For in verse 2, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God the Father sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. And this is simply speaking of the sacrifice that Jesus made on behalf of all who would surrender to him. 
He did this that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh. They pursue the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit pursue the things of the Spirit. Well, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, we're told very specifically what the things of the Spirit are. Joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, meekness, patience. These are the things of the Spirit, which are opposite of jealousy, envy, anger, bitterness, holding grudges, self-pity, depression, self-centeredness, and selfishness. For if these are the characteristics that our lives are about in verse 6, these are to be carnally minded, and they lead us to death. Not physical death, but spiritual death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, eternal life and peace in this life. Because the carnal mind is at war with God. It's an enemy of God, for it is not subject to the law of God. And even if it wanted to be, it cannot be, because the seed of God has not been planted within that soul. So those who are in the flesh have not the seed of God planted in their lives. They cannot please God. It is only when he gives us his spirit, which is giving us new desires, so that the things we once loved, we now hate, and the things which we once hated, we now love. It's only when the Almighty plants this within our soul, changing our hearts, that we now bring him pleasure. But ye, young believer, you who have chosen to follow Christ, to surrender to his will, you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells within you. And there's an easy way to determine this of ourselves and of others. If any man does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. For if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. You are two people. You are the carnal man and you are the spiritual man, and they war against one another each and every moment that you're alive, each and every moment that you're awake. So if the spirit of him, the father that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. He will quicken, he will make alive something within you that now desires the things that bring him pleasure. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh, but to live after the spirit. He gave his life for us, therefore we are indebted to give our lives for him. And our lives are simply that, our dreams, our goals, our plans. We sacrifice those on behalf of the Lord Jesus. The things that we enjoy, it's not a sacrifice if it doesn't cost us something. If you live after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. In other words, our mortal bodies crave things that bring it pleasure. Whether it's food, whether it's entertainment, whether it's sensual pleasure, these are the deeds of the flesh. And we are to mortify them. We are to put them to death each and every day. For those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So those that are led by their carnal flesh they're the sons of the enemy, the sons of the evil one, the sons of Lucifer. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you may now cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself bears witness within our spirit that we are the children of God. Why? Because we now hunger and thirst for righteousness. We desire to be in right standing with God. And we examine our hearts, our minds, and our lives very closely to ensure that there's nothing there that would cause him to disapprove of us. We take our relationship with him very seriously. And we do this because we are his children in verse 17. And because we are his children, we have now been made heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with his son Jesus, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. How do we suffer? We suffer through the sacrifices that we make. Now, it's probably at this point that you may be thinking or saying to yourself, Pastor, it seems like day after day, video after video, you continue to harp on the same things. But notice, friends, I'm only presenting to you the Word of God, not my opinion. I spend a great amount of time in explaining to you the Word of God. And yes, I will agree, it is very repetitious. It seems to say the same thing over and over, chapter after chapter, book after book. But the reason it does this is because we are so thick-headed. We are bent toward backsliding. We chase after the things of this world, and we are so unwilling to give ourselves unto the things of God. How many people do you think on today, Christmas, and if I'm right, I may be wrong, but if I'm right, because I don't watch sports, I do believe that there will be some football games on today. And how many Christians do you think will be reading through the book of Isaiah, reading through the book of Luke, reading through the book of Revelation, instead of watching these football games? Or how many will neglect the Word of God, it will sit on a shelf collecting dust, and the television will be on, feeding their minds things that serve no eternal purpose or bring no glory to God. How much time will be spent with friends and family, and how little time with the Lord Himself? On a day where the celebration worldwide is supposed to be all about Him. But the Bible is very clear in its message, friends. Notice what Jesus said when asked this question. In Luke chapter 13, verse 23, one of them said unto the Lord Jesus, are there few that be saved? It seems like the message you're presenting, Jesus, is going to exclude so many because so many are unwilling to pay the price. And Jesus said unto them, strive, fight, battle, struggle, to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say to you, they will seek to enter in, but they will not be able. Why? Because they are given to the things of this world. They will not understand the message that if you like it, that's probably what makes it wrong. Look, I'm an all-American boy just like any other boy in America that grew up watching sports enjoying baseball, football, NASCAR. And my flesh would enjoy sitting down and being entertained by one of these sporting events. But I deny myself this simple pleasure because it causes my flesh so much pain. And that's what Jesus is saying. Notice again, are there few that be saved? Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Jesus repeats the same idea in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, when he says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Now, there are many people that do not call him Lord, that do not call him Master and King, but there are those that do. Yet many of them will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven will enter. Many of those people will say to me on that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. You knew me, you knew all about me, but I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work lawlessness, you that work iniquity, you that practice sin. You that give yourselves to the pleasures of this world and do not understand that this world is an enemy of my father. And you cannot serve two masters. You must make a choice. You must make a decision. And that's what Romans chapter 8 is all about, friends. It is drawing a very clear line in the sand. Everything is black and white. Those that are after the flesh in verse 5, mind the things of the flesh. And so if you're minding the things of the flesh, then you've answered the question for yourself, friends. You're of the flesh. But if you mind the things of the Spirit, then you're of the Spirit. 
Because in verse 7, the carnal mind is at war against God. It is not subject. It does not surrender. It does not consider itself a slave to the law of God. And those that are in this condition cannot please God. And that's why we begin every video, friends, with holiness is a way of life. It is a lifestyle. It is a series of choices we make every day, day after day, to keep God first, ourselves last, and others in between the two. And so it is my prayer, friend, that intellectually you will grasp this because it is so important for your soul. And through great effort and discipline, you will not be just a hearer of the word, but you will be a doer of the word. You will strive each and every day to do all that it commands of you. And the basic message of the Lord Jesus is to take up your cross daily, deny yourself, and follow him. Walk as he walked. Well, friends, I pray that the word of God has inspired you today, that it has quickened you today, that it has struck a spark in your heart to live more faithfully unto him and to recognize the danger that lies within the carnal flesh and to understand the difference between the flesh and the spirit, what the flesh desires and what the spirit desires. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. And I got to tell you, it's kind of hard to close this part of the chapter because this chapter preaches itself. And so I encourage you to go back and just read Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 17, and really contemplate what you're reading. Allow it to speak to you, to illuminate light in your life, in your heart, in your soul. And any area that you know is not pleasing to the Lord, take it before him so that you may find the freedom, the victory that he came to give. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you're here with us. I truly love and care about your journey with the Lord Jesus. And I want to present to you the truth the best way that I know how. So when you get there on that day, you're not going to stand surprised. Having convinced yourself that you've lived your entire life according to what he has commanded, and yet you've missed the mark all along. I want you to stand confidently before him, knowing that as a humble servant, you have done all in your power to take up your cross daily, deny yourself, and follow him, walk as he walked when he was upon this earth. Now, as the Lord Jesus wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I'll see you on the next video.